Hi, it's Mike with Utastic again. I'm sitting down with Mike Burton. Mike is an Android developer over in Palo Alto, and he has done uh, several open source tools. The most popular tool he's created is RoboJuice, which is a uh, dependency. It's an IOC tool. I, well, I'll let him explain it uh, for, for doing Android development. Uh, he's also written a book, The Android Application Development for Dummies. Does a lot of speaking inside of the Android community. But uh, thanks for taking the time to sit down with me, uh, Mike. It's, uh, it's nice to talk with you. Sure, absolutely. Nice to finally catch up. Yeah. So, what what led you into Android development? It's kind of a it's kind of a new platform uh, for the last few years. Were you always in mobile or? No, actually, I wasn't. I was uh, I was basically a back end engineer for most of my career, um, and I was doing mostly uh, Spring and Hibernate and uh, Java based uh, solutions um, using EJBs way way back, and then uh, abandoning that and, mm -hmm. and uh, switching over to Spring. And then eventually moving over to other tiers like uh, uh, Django and Python and uh, doing a little bit of Ruby on Rails. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't until about four years ago, uh, I was working at a, a little startup up in San Francisco uh, with my friends Mihir and Yishai. And uh, I was doing all the back end work and um, we started getting into mobile because mm -hmm. the uh, iPhone had been released about a year ago. and. Uh, the Android G1 had just come out, and we thought, hmm, well, we don't really know if this G1 thing is going to take off or not, but, uh, you know, hey, Mike, you have some Java experience. Why don't you uh, for us? So wrote my first app on there, um, ended up uh, focusing entirely on mobile for uh, the past several years. After writing the app for that startup, um, I also wrote the OpenTable, uh, TripIt, and Dig applications as well as a few a few other ones um, and uh, then came here uh, well actually the startup got acquired by Groupon and so I started working on the Groupon application right away and been doing that ever since so but what was it about about the Android though that hooked you that instead of going over to iOS or or even Blackberry or RIM development <laughs> right right um, well I mean I think one of the really interesting things is, you know, we didn't know what direction the uh, Android community was going to was going to go off in. But uh, one thing that really attracted me uh, over the iOS community is that, um, you know, a lot of the tools were open source. So Google basically acquired a startup called Android, um, and that startup was using a whole bunch of different open source tools to construct their their OS platform. Mm -hmm. um, and so, though, you know, you could already leverage. Uh, just a ton of your, your Java-based libraries and things that you're already familiar with. Um, and so I was able to get in there and just start writing code really quickly. Um, and then after starting, I started getting involved in the open source community, I realized that more so than in iOS, there are a lot of people out there contributing to Android, if not directly to the Android platform, then directly to libraries that a lot of Android applications use. Um, and there's a little bit of that on iOS, but I think because... Uh, I think Android is a little bit more of a scrappy platform. Um, it's got a few more rough edges, mm -hmm. and I think um, that gives a lot of opportunities for open source people to come in and contribute. Yeah, it doesn't feel too polished, so you can't figure out where you can get a, a fingernail underneath something and pry it open. Exactly, exactly. Whereas I think Apple, uh, when they have rough edges, they do their best to hide them from you so you yeah. can't get under the hood. Android, they just expose all that shit and like, <laughs> put so. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, uh, the um, have you, do you ever use any of the uh, alternate? Like even with with Android phones, is, there's different builds of the app. I like I run Cyanogen Mod. Um, yeah. I've run. Um, I'm trying to blank on the other one, but it's it's a it's a Chinese uh, uh, a mod. M I M I U I M I M I U I. Oh, I haven't. Uh, I'm familiar with it, but I've I've never tried it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, do you have any, like, do you use Cyanogen or, or do you use stock? Uh, I don't. I try to stay with the stock stuff as much as mm -hmm. possible. You know, obviously in my in my day job, we're mostly uh, targeting, uh, Groupon has, um, gosh, I don't even know how many millions of downloads at this point, but it's it's a lot. I think it's right. over five million. Um, and uh, the vast, vast majority of those people are all on stock, mm -hmm. uh, stock ROMs. 
Um, and so we've got our hands full just trying to keep track of all the different devices that are out there already, right. let alone adding custom ROMs to it. So every once in a while we'll see bug reports coming in from the Cyanogen stuff, mm -hmm. and we do try to get to those, but um, we focus more on the stock stuff. And so you've also, I mean, you, you've obviously been very prolific in the community. What is RoboJuice and, and what, it, it's being used by some pretty big name vendors and competitors yeah. of Groupon as well. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, um, so RoboJuice is a dependency injection framework. It's, it's basically an inversion of control container, mm -hmm. uh, IOC container, like you were mentioning earlier. Um, and it came about because of my experience on uh, using Spring on the back end. So basically, if you're familiar with Java development um, and container-based development, what you'll find is that it used to be everybody was using these things called Entity Beams and EJB3 and that kind of stuff. It was a very heavyweight standard that Java and Sun produced um, in order to do enterprise development. Well, what people realized is that the EJB standards were so convoluted and so difficult to use um, the interfaces were just terrible, that there came about this competitor called Spring. Right. And Spring, um, I don't know if you want to actually get into what dependency injection is, it's sort of a, an open-ended, difficult topic. Yeah, that's, that's a longer conversation. Um, we're, we're more focused on the community and, and what, what drove us to become involved and, and take on what we've taken on in, in sure, the community. Sure, sure. So, so I came over to Android, and I realized that all of the, the nice, clean software development skills that I had developed under using a container like Spring, I wasn't able to bring over to the Android space at all. Java, you know, Android was basically just plain old regular Java. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was painful. It hurt. Yeah. It, 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 was, it was really bad. And so what I started doing when I was working on the TripIt application is I started working on... Uh, bringing dependency injection to Android. Mm -hmm. um, and I continue that through TripIt and OpenTable and, uh, and into my time here at Groupon as well. Okay, and that's, and that's something that's totally open source. Anybody can yep. go check it out. If they Google it, they'll find RoboJuice. And, um, mm -hmm. and you know, jumping to the, the book, is that, is that kind of how you came to be involved in writing the uh, application development? Or was <coughs> that book before RoboJuice? Yeah, yeah, no, so the book and uh, RoboJuice happen around the same time. Mm -hmm. So the first edition of the book was written by my friend Don Felker. Um, he is a, an Android consultant, and he has um, a startup that he's working on called Conquer, uh, which is a great sort of multiplayer mobile game. Mm -hmm. um, he wrote the original version of the Android application de for development, Android application development for Dummies book. Um, and uh, when it came time to implement the second edition, uh, he asked me if I wanted to take it over because he was working on a bunch of other mm -hmm. stuff at the time. And, uh, you know, it sounded great to me. I had some talks with the publishers. They were familiar with my work based on RoboJuice, and uh, we just took it from there. So I took over the second edition, and uh, uh, the third edition will probably be me as well. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, people, I mean, we give uh, the, the four dummies a little bit of a, little bit of a, a hard yeah, time. But needle, needle, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, I mean, were, were you hesitant at first, or did because you trusted your Don, you were just fine? No, with No, no. I mean, uh, I mean, I think it it makes sense that we give the Dummies uh, series uh, a difficult time. You know, we are basically technical experts in our fields, and we may not be Android experts, but we certainly know our own. You know, uh, are you a Ruby guy or yeah? So. Um, so basically, we know that stuff really well. The Dummy series is different. The Dummy series is intended is has an audience of people who don't have expertise in a given field, um, and in fact, they may not have hardly any expertise at all. Um, so this might be somebody who's just like, "Hey, I'd like to get into this Android thing." Right. Exactly. You know, not necessarily. I'm a programmer, and oh, I gotta implement this this UI in in, in Android. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. So. Um, the, the book is great if you're just coming up to speed, if you're just getting introduced to Android. Mm -hmm. um, but for people like us who already have a little bit of familiarity and stuff like that, you know, we can, we can get along just fine with uh, Google and Stack Overflow. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you're, you're in one of the – you have an interesting kind of uh, um, credential that you – one of the top, top ten contributors to – what was it? The top ten percent of contributors to the uh, Java and Android tags on yeah. Stack Overflow? Yeah, well, I mean, 
basically that just comes around from asking a whole hell of a lot of questions. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was there early in uh, in Android development and couldn't figure anything out. So every time I ran into a question, I just posted it to Stack Overflow, and it uh, ended up accumulating a lot of points. So well, nowadays, I spend more time answering than than asking. But yeah, eventually uh, it flips oh. over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you you exposed. Um, it's we had a book. Uh, uh, Another person who I'd interviewed, uh, Dave Hoover, he had written a book about um, apprenticeship and learning, basically. And one of the things was exposing your ignorance. And it's and it shows how if you're open that you don't know, eventually you will know. And eventually yep. you can teach and, and share and bring that knowledge back. And, and, and it all just kind of goes full circle. And Hakuna Matata, the circle right, of life. Exactly. So, <laughs> well, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down with me, Mike. Was, sure I appreciate thing. it. Thanks. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm glad we got this chance to talk. Mm-hmm.